All right, guys. Today I'll be teaching you how to make your very own breakdown buck saw. And when I mean breakdown buck saw, I mean it breaks down. <clears throat> Stay tuned. And I'll show you how it works and how it's done. Two more pieces that big. Boom. And boom. So we've got our three pieces. One of them's slightly askewed. That'll probably be, I don't know if I'm decided yet, but it might be my horizontal piece that go between the bars for the buck saw and your buck saw blade. One step completed. On to the next step, and that is uh, to carve down, say I'm making this one into my horizontal piece. I think, yeah, I think I'll make this one into my horizontal piece. You, you create a wedge on this side, a wedge on this side, that matches up and lines up with the wedge on this side. And then you go ahead and mark on these about where that middle horizontal piece is gonna be sitting. So roughly, roughly about six inches from the bottom. And uh, We'll cut mini wedges into here, no longer than an inch in. In this case, probably a half inch in, no, around a half inch in on both of these pieces. So when the wedges sit in between here, they marry up with the, uh, the wedges you created into these and it'll uh, create like a nice seating and that way when you tie down your top part it'll uh, cinch the blade it'll pull it and stretch it make sure it's really really tight and uh, those wedges really help the pivot point so on to the next step wedges
right. See how I've formed a wedge? You're doing that on both sides. If you got your wedge like that on this side, you have to do the same thing on this side. Make your wedge at that point. So the next thing you're going to do for your horizontal piece on your verticals, you're going to create a, a wedge a seating a female part where that male part of the wedge will nice and marry up right with that uh, with that wedge and that will create a V so your your wedge point will sit right in there and it will lock in so let's move to that next um, I'll show you how I go about doing that. Okay, <clears throat> so I like to find where my saw is gonna sit level down here. And with your blade, mark across a little line. And that that is where you're gonna carve out your V, your wedge, your female wedge. <laughs> so how I like to go about doing that is you angle your knife on one side of the wedge, or on one side of that line that you just created. Find yourself a good um, batoning uh, hammer is what it essentially is and to start beating in you don't want to go further than halfway in on your stick you don't even really want to go halfway in on your on your vertical pieces but also you want to go straight see how I'm kind of angled off like that compared to the uh, the piece here I'm going at a downward angle that's not what I want to do so I'm gonna correct that on my next hit and I'll uh, I'll make it more horizontal so that that uh, wedge piece that I created will sit in there real nice and flush All right, I've created my notch, my female wedge, my male wedge. It's gonna sit just like that. And once this is all together, that'll lock in real nice. Here's my other side of my horizontal piece. Yeah, this is gonna work out pretty good. So yeah, move on to your, your other vertical. Get a nice uh, wedge point cut out of that. I don't know if you can see that. Also nicked myself a little bit. I nicked myself. But yeah, you don't wanna go halfway in or at least no further than halfway if you do because it's gonna create so much stress that that's gonna, that's gonna be where it breaks. <laughs> All right, on to the next vertical piece. And there it is. So next step is to put your saw blade in and how you wanna do that is from where your wedge points are, you're wanting to go exactly the opposite direction on where, where those are facing in the top of your board here. 
So I'm gonna clean that up a little bit and you can either baton it in where you hit down, baton it in and don't go further than an inch. But that tends to start to split your, your board and uh, it'll make it so you need to tie up a little lashing just under it so it doesn't split any further down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna saw and take out material for where my saw blade is gonna sit. We'll do that next. You grab your saw if you have one. If not, batoning it with your blade by doing what I was just doing to create the, uh, the female uh, wedge points. Just take a blade and a uh, baton, a hammer essentially, and whack down on it no further than an inch just so your blade can sit down in there real nice. But yeah, since we got this, let's go ahead and take the material out where it will be sitting and it shouldn't want to wedge out on us and we'll be able to throw this in the this set in the back end of your pickup truck and it won't take up much room at all and it saves on uh, buying one of these buck saws. On to taking the material out rather than splitting it. Here we go. Seems a little dangerous because your hand's going to be below it and you don't want to slip and mess up. It's going pretty good. <clears throat> and I'm going to take my time at this, guys. So I'll be back when I have both pieces slit and cut and ready to go. All right. Got both sides done. next step is to find little sticks to wedge in between wedge, wedge into those holes there and uh, when we put our cross brace across the horizontal across and our string on the bottom these will pull outward against those little sticks and tighten up your saw blade. All right, we've got our two little end piece sticks that we will be putting through these holes on the end and that'll lock up against that branch or the your uh, verticals and tighten up your saw blade
Um, last step that you need to find is a stick. And this is crucial to have something that's kind of strong, but around finger width. And you don't want something that'll just break easy. So find something that has just died or is uh, not waterlogged. Nothing off the, on the ground if the uh, ground has been wet for several days. So find something semi still living, but don't be a dick about it by cutting down a whole tree just to get that one little piece. All right, found a good piece. You wanna find one probably at least eight inches long if you're using a, a buck saw blade that's like 20 inches. That way, when you do this next process, you're wrapping your, you're wrapping your string and creating tension on it and each time you wrap it it's resting on your horizontal log and it's locking in there it's creating just a tension point and a lock this is your lock essentially so about eight inches long and you want to taper one end, I guess. Makes things a little, sit a little nicer on the, uh, on that horizontal log. And I'm gonna create a little seating point for my cord so my cord doesn't want to slip up and pass and off of this. So with that stick I made you, or I had you make, and that paracord I had you tie, I like to pre-start spinning that paracord to create tension on your blade. And then right at the last second, go ahead and stick your stick in. And then continue the process of spinning it. And that's pulling tighter and tighter on your saw blade. See how that's acting as a lock? The paracord's pretty tough and this stick that I had you grab is pretty strong. So give it a lot of turns. Make sure your horizontal board is real nice and locked in into their wedge points. I think that's it.